The House of Squibb presents Academy Award. Tonight, Olivia de Havilland in Cheers for Miss Bishop. Every week, Squibb brings you Hollywood's finest. The great picture plays, the great actors and actresses, techniques and skills chosen from the honor roll of those who have won or been nominated for the famous Golden Oscar of the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. For generations, the House of Squibb has been known for the high quality and unfailing dependability of its products, each the result of a never-ending quest for perfection. Today, the great family of Squibb products reflects the tremendous advance of science in its contribution to human health and well-being. The name Squibb stands for progress through research. Squibb is a name you can trust. Tonight, Squibb brings you the lovely Hollywood screen star, Olivia de Havilland, who has twice been nominated for an Academy Award. You will hear Miss de Havilland in the tender love story, Cheers for Miss Bishop, the picture which in 1941 was nominated for the Academy Award. This is the story of an old maid and in its way. It's definitely part of the story of America. No doubt there are thousands of Miss Bishops still fresh in your memories, thousands of them in the unwritten saga of teaching in this nation. But somehow, there are never quite enough, not nearly enough of them, to keep the great faith, to teach us once again that we are from a great tradition, that we are custodians of a great destiny, that we have a responsibility too, living up to our Miss Bishops. Eighteen eighty-three, and a young lady fresh from the first graduating class of Midwestern University decides on a career. Well, good morning, Miss Bishop. President Cochran, I thought that if you knew of an opening in any of the schools around here, I mean just the prairie grade schools... I'm just back from my vacation and pretty busy with fall enrollments. And I'm trying to arrange for a new member of the faculty, a young woman to teach freshman English. Oh, I see. Yes, Girl I've watched pretty closely for four years. An intelligent girl, I think. She seems to have one thing which is mighty important to the teaching profession. She loves and understands folks. President Cochran, do you mean... Oh, of course, I know you couldn't mean... But I can't help thinking you might mean... <laughs> oh, President Cochran, <laughs> do you mean... Dear, dear, there's a heap of repetition in that sentence for a teacher of freshman English. <laughs> Surely I was blessed. Everything seemed to come my way. Career, happiness, and then, without warning, the man of my dreams. It happened one night at a dance. I'd gone there with Sam. Poor, loyal, devoted Sam. Well, Sam, looking for my sister, Ella? Uh, no, Amy. I see she's being rushed by that young lawyer, Del Thompson. He's certainly attractive, Sam. And the way he's swarming around Ella at the dance tonight. He must sure be crazy about her. Who isn't? You've got to let me take you home. I know that the prince should take the princess, but... This isn't a fairy tale, Ella. This is real. I'm in love with you. Head over heels. All right, Dale. Then let's go now. Do you, Ella?
Ella Bishop, take this man for your lawful wedded husband? <laughs> of course I do, you fool. And do you, Delbert Thompson, take this woman for your lawful wedded wife? I... <clears throat> I do. I pronounce you man and wife. May I kiss the bride? Oh, Del. Ella, it's like a dream. Oh, everything is coming to me. A chance to teach the man I love. It's the end of all dreaming. A little house, a red firelight, the man you love and, and children. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so wonderfully happy. <laughs> About through for this time. Expect you're glad, Miss Ella. Standing for a fitting's mighty tiring thing. Even if it is your wedding dress. Do you suppose that time will ever come when a person can walk into a store and buy a dress ready-made? Huh, good land, no, Miss Ella. There ain't no two sets of hips and busts in the world alike. Well, I guess you can go upstairs and slip it off now. I will. Oh, I feel like a queen. Where's Ella? The veil just came. Amy, you take it right up to her. She went upstairs to take her wedding dress off. All right. Del's coming for supper, and the bridegroom mustn't see any of the outfit until the wedding day. Well, what's the difference? Ella won't mind if I try it on. Gee, well, Mr. Mirror, would I make a beautiful bride? Ella, the most beautiful bride in the world, my darling. No, I'm not. Oh, Del. Amy. You thought I was Ella. I knew you did. I couldn't help myself. When you came up behind me and kissed the back of my neck, something... Del, I love you. Amy, we're crazy. I, I mean, what a crazy mistake. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, Amy, oh, there you are. So the veil arrived. Oh, thank you, dear. Will you put it in the spare room of the dress? Yes. Why, Del, I didn't know you were here. I hope you didn't see the veil, or if you did, I hope it isn't bad luck. How could it be bad luck? Well, I didn't mean that seriously. It's only that you aren't supposed to see the wedding regalia until the wedding day. But why can't this be the wedding day? Oh, darling. But why not? We can keep it secret till college is over. Dale. Ella, put it down to spring or buck fever or what you will, but please drive to Maple City with me tonight and be married. Dale, I must go to Central Hall tonight, a special meeting. You can't go, Ella. You mustn't go. You, you, you've got to do what I'm asking. But Ella must go to the meeting, Dell. Don't you understand? Amy's right, darling. Will you drive me? I'm due there now. Of course. I'm sorry, Ella. I guess I'm nervous about the wedding. I'm going to have a game of cribbage with Judge Peters. Could you two drop me? Of course. You drop me first, darling. And then you can take Amy to Judge Peters. No, I... Do what Ella says, Dell. Remember, you might as well learn now how to obey. Too beautiful a night for cribbage. Don't you think so, Del? I don't know, Amy. It is a beautiful night. Isn't it, Del? Yes. It's a beautiful night. It'll be heavenly down by the river. Could we drive down there? Or... Or... What, Amy? Or... Are you afraid? <laughs> Del, 
Bill, I shouldn't have left class, but your note, why did you want to see me? It is terrible, Ella. It, Tell her, Dell. Ella, I'd give my right arm to spare you this. You must believe that. What are you saying? It was an accident, I tell you. You left him alone. And there was a moon by the river. So now he's mine, you understand? You can't marry him. He's mine. Oh, well, I'm so miserable. I'm sorry, President Cochran. I, I thought it'd be easier to write it. Mother and I are going to New York. It's an assistant librarian's position. I see. Teaching is a hard job, and it never pays much. I know. And lots of times it's a headache, wondering if it's worth it. Why, President Cochran, how can you say that? You're inspired. What you give young people, you know, courage, confidence, ideals. I am trying. Ella, we have something here in this country. The idea of people being free. But it's got to be taught and retaught. But once in a while, someone comes along with a God given gift for teaching. You have it, Ella. That magic touch. <laughs> well, I, I. I certainly didn't intend to deliver a lecture. I wish you all the luck in the world in your new post. President Cochran, may I have that letter? I. I think I'd better stay. Fine and dandy. What a perfect way to describe that wonderful wide awake start of the day feeling. The quick refreshment you enjoy every time you use Squib Dental Cream. For Squib Dental... And make the best impression. Remember to ask tomorrow for Squib Dental Cream. Taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. And now, the House of Squib presents part two of Academy Award, starring Olivia de Havilland in Cheers for Miss Bishop. The prairie years have sped along with their rich summers and dark, snow-filled winters. Years of bitterness to so many of us, and for me. But somehow I couldn't let myself hoard misery like a sad miser. There was the university and my job to do. And there was hope. Hope, the beautiful child left behind in birth by my sister Amy. We never heard from Dell after that. And I undertook to raise Hope as my own. So little Hopey's got a bow, eh, El? Yes, Sam. One of our outstanding sophomores, Richard Clark. Yes, fine boy, Ella. Fine boy, that Richard. Well, hello, everybody. I'm so afraid we'd be late. Aunt Ella, Uncle Sam, Mr. Cochran. <laughs> she ran me every step of the way. <laughs> hello, Richard. Hello, Miss Bishop. Come along. Have some punch. Yes. To the new year, 1900. Skull. A new century. Isn't it going to be wonderful? Wonderful, darling. May it bring prosperity. And common sense. And lasting peace. To you, El. I've waited a century. Oh, Sam, dear, Ciao, I... Now, El, no decisions. I haven't asked you yet. And Ella, make a toast. Let's drink to our country. She's too much in a hurry, and she makes a lot of mistakes. But somehow or other, she does keep her people free. May she always do that. And may her people always realize what that freedom is worth.
The first semester had hardly opened that year of 1900 when I met John Stevens. He'd come from back east to join our growing staff. I had thought I was beyond things of the heart, but it seems I was vulnerable after all. So vulnerable. Well, folks, any customers for a sleigh ride? The roads are slick and the moon's bright and... And you're out of luck, Uncle Sam. I'm going skating with Richard and Aunt Ella's expecting... Hope. Professor Stevens for an academic evening. <laughs> Good night. Is Stevens coming? Yes, he's bringing a book. Won't you stay and listen, Sam? You could do with a little brushing up. Oh, I don't know why I never had more feeling for books. Wish I had. Don't wish it. I wouldn't change you for the world. You wouldn't marry me either. But you may, yet I've still got all the time in the world. That is, uh, unless this fellow Stevens... Sam, I want to tell you something. Professor Stevens has a wife. A wife? She's in Virginia. They... Well, they haven't much in common. Well, why don't they get a divorce? Oh, Sam, how wonderful to find someone in Oak River who doesn't shudder at that word. If it means your happiness, Elle. Oh, thank you, Sam. Good evening, John. I'm sorry, Ella, I'm a little late. I've been trying to persuade Sam to stay. Oh, oh perhaps another time, Professor. Of course. Uh, good night. Good night, Sam. Good night. Ella, I'm going to write my wife. I'm ask her to divorce me. Oh, John, do you think... I'm going to pray that she will. I'll pray, too. Oh, my very dearest. Please, John, do you mind... I've waited so long. If it's going to be, let's have it perfect. Oh, it will be, Ella. Nothing can change it now. It was so daring a thing that we did, running off together like children to Maple City. John knew a restaurant. Checo's Italian Restaurant. Shall I ever forget Papa Checo? We'll leave dinner to you, Checo. Uh, thank you, Professor Stevens. It will be perfect. Well, darling, do you like it? Like it? Oh, John, you don't know what you've done for me these past two weeks. Uh, Ella, I've, uh, I've had a letter today from my wife. I want to read you just one paragraph. John, tonight? Uh-huh. It has to be tonight. John, I knew I was never the right wife for you. But to consent to a divorce would be to deny the principles by which I was brought up. I can understand. But what about us? Yes. What? Wine for the lady. Oh. It's from Ovieto, a little Italian town. Sleepy and warm. Ah, there's a great deal of warm sunlight. <laughs> I remember seeing a beggar there with a flower in his hat. He was perfectly happy. A beggar with a flower in his hat and sunlight... To Ovieto. So, now you know all about me. We know all about each other. And this beautiful evening is at an end. Ella, why can't we sail for Europe in June? A flower for the lady. Thank you, Checo. Will you? Thank you, John. And goodbye, my dear. Ella. John, I'd do it gladly. But you and I, being as we are... There'll be tomorrow. And sometime, we'll be glad that we stayed for just this little while in Orvieto and didn't try to go on to Rome. 
I must catch my train to Oak River. And I know you'll understand. I'd rather take it alone. But what about... And remember this. You've given me more than any man I've ever known. And this way, I can keep it always, without fear or shame. Come to the door with me. For the lady, the wonderful lady, her cloak. It's been perfect, all of it. But you forgot one thing. Yes, Ella. A kiss for the lady. Again the years fall away like snow driven in the wind. Where? Where have they gone? But they have, and they've left only spring behind. I have a new daughter to think of now. Hope's child, Gretchen. And she is registered at Old Midwestern. Oh, the years. The years and the generations I've welcomed and taught and bade farewell. Where are they now? Anybody home? All there is. Come in, Sam. You're all I want to see. Just thought I'd drop in for a second on my way home. Oh, uh, by the way, the university office asked me to deliver this note to you. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. I've been expecting it. <laughs> My dear President Crowder, you're quite right. I'm 73 years old. I've been teaching long enough. No, oh, you don't know how much your cooperation means, Miss Bishop. Well, if I were 63, you wouldn't find me so cooperative. But I learned years ago that no one is irreplaceable at Midwestern, and that goes for me. But, Miss Bishop, there are still... Several weeks to go. I know. And thanks. Miss Bishop, uh, there's so much I'd like to say to you. Don't. Please. Please. Wow. All of you here? And in evening clothes. My, what a pretty sight you are. Richard and Hope. Hello. And Gretchen and Buzz. Yes. And Sam. Yes. And out there, streaming into Old Central... Why, there's never been a crowd like this. Well, you know, they want to say goodbye to the old hall. Yes. Yes, of course. Well, are we all ready? Let's go. Just another dull alumni dinner and no use of pretending it won't be. <laughs> Uh, Miss Bishop, uh, may I have the honor? Uh, will you take my arm? Why, my goodness. That's very nice of you, President Crowder, but I, I don't see... You. Oh, but you will, Miss Bishop. You but will. all this... Is there something here that I don't know about? Stiff upper lip, darling. It's all for you. And so, for your irreplaceable gift of human sympathy, and because you exemplify to us all what the American spirit can be, your university bestows on you, Ella Bishop, the highest degree in its power. I can't thank you. I won't even try. I'll only say that I've had a long life, and in that life, I've seen the brave, the gallant, and the kind. They keep coming on, the best in this country. 
So, now Old Central and I are retiring to make way for modern buildings and methods. It's an appropriate time to quote the words of our great founder, words that inspired us when Central Hall and I were young. Wisdom is the first cousin to freedom, and freedom is the glory of our nation and our people. So, to our nation, our people, and freedom. Are you there, Sam? Yes, El. I was just sitting here thinking how kind everyone has been. Take it easy, El. And I believe you are the only person I've ever been really unkind to in all my life. El, it's downright pudding-headed. There's a question you've been waiting to ask me, Sam. Now, El, don't you go answering any questions till they're asked. I've got scads of time, El. All the time in the world. Yes, Sam. All the time in the world. Helping to win applause for every lovely star is the glow of exhilaration, the sense of inner freshness that seems to brighten up her smile. Youthful charm and freshness starts with feeling fresh. And there is a simple way to capture that feeling of refreshment any time of the day. Brush your teeth with Squib Dental Cream. You see, Squib Dental Cream, like all the great family of Squib products, gives you something extra. It has a frosty, minty coolness as it first touches your lips. And as you brush and clean your teeth with Squib Dental Cream, it foams into a quick action, bringing a sensation of refreshment and cleanliness so that your whole mouth seems to wake up and feel youthful, alive. And that gives you a fine feeling of assurance when you're meeting people. Your smile will be brighter, and you'll feel brighter. So start tomorrow to brush your teeth with Squib Dental Cream. Be sure to ask for Squib. You'll taste, feel, and see the refreshing difference. Next Wednesday, another great picture. The House of Squibb will present Academy Awards starring Rex Harrison in Night Train. Olivia de Havilland may currently be seen in Nunnally Johnson's The Dark Mirror, an international picture. This is Hugh Brundage bidding you good night until next Wednesday at the same time when you're invited to listen again to Academy Award. Presented by the House of Squibb, a name you can trust. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.